Hey, Digital Media Arts students, we're going to continue on part four of the tape dispenser. We're going to work on creating the little teeth here across. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, again, how I model this might not be how exactly I showed you in class, but it should get you roughly to the same place. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a little sub, couple subdivisions across here that's going to help us create the little grooves. So we're going to go into our mesh, our mesh mesh tools, insert edge loop, we're going to click on the options, and we're going to insert one every time. So we're going to go ahead and click close now. And with this tool, you're just going to select the edge that you want it to cut across. And I just left click there, and it created one. I'm going to left click again to create another one. So now I have two edge loops that I added. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn every one of these into a spike. So I'm going to create 30 of them in total. So that means I'm going to subdivide this one face. Now this is going to create end guns and we're going to have to resolve that end gun issue later. But for now, I'm going to take this face, oops, uh, this face, and I'm going to turn it into uh, like 30 subdivisions. So under mesh tools, uh, we have a tool here called add divisions. And we're going to click on the Add Division tool. And you can see here that when it pops up, it'll show you how many U's and how many V's you want. Now, 15 U's will give me a edge to use. But because I want it to be a sharp point, I'm going to double this number. So I'm going to go to 30. And because I want one to in the middle so I can poke it outward, I'm going to make it uh, one. And actually, I want to do this with uh, geometry on. So I'm actually going to control Z just a little bit here. OK, I'm going to click on the uh, modeling toolkit and turn symmetry on. So I'm going to do this twice. OK, so again, I'm going to click on this face. And I'm going to go ahead and go to Add Divisions. And I want to do 30 by 2. Now, again, what this does is it creates me like a little crosshair in the middle for me to go ahead and move upward, just move upward. And that's going to give me my little sharp points. So I'm going to click on this, hold shift, and click on every other vertex. And all we're going to do is just move these upward to create our spikes for our tape dispenser here. So we're going to hit W. And again, when we hit W, you see that our pivot is over here. Now, if you ever want to reset your pivot, just go ahead and hit D to get into pivot mode, right click and reset pivot position. And it'll kind of reset over here. But actually what I really want is to move it to the normal of this one point. So they're all kind of going out that same direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and choose this point. I still have D open. I'm going to left click and drag. And again, I have my snap to vertex on, so it's snapping there. And then inside my tool, uh, under my move tool right now, so I have the move tool, and under my move settings, it still says object. I'm going to switch it to component. And now I have the normal of that one point. And now I'm going to move it up. i got to turn off snap uh, to point here, because there's no vertex to snap to. And I'm going to turn off my uh, vertex mode, oh, sorry, my pivot mode. Hit D again to turn off pivot mode. And now you can see here I can move my spikes in that direction. So I'm going to go ahead and move it up. It's not too spiky, so something like that. Okay, so I moved every other point to create these spikes. And uh, that sort of fixes that. Um, so let's go ahead and give, uh, if you guys look at the tape dispenser in the classroom, these faces kind of go downward. So I'm going to extrude downward, and that should be the same direction as this. I can move it if I feel that it's not the right direction, but it is. So I'm going to extrude downward to kind of create that little uh, pit for the tape dispenser. So there we go. And that's good. OK, and uh, again, we can always move these edges if we uh, have the need. Um, but uh, these are actually perfect the way they are, at least I think so. And uh, there we go. So the only problem that we have now is the fact that we have these end guns now. If you look at this face, I'm going to turn off uh, Optic Z for a minute. You can see here that this one face is actually 31 triangles. So it's somewhere on the long the lines of 33 edges because this edge right here is shared with this edge. 
So you guys look at the edges here, this edge, and these, all these have like 30 edges across. So 30 edges across, 31, 32, 33. So this is a 33 gone, which is not what we want. <clears throat> now we can go here and start multi-cutting. So I could do this. I'm going to show you what we're not going to do, but in case you want to do it, you could just start left-clicking and dragging down here and creating these triangles, and that will eventually get rid of the ingons. But the problem is now we have these huge triangles where we have a flat surface. So what I prefer to do in this scenario is create an edge loop that kind of cuts across here that we can create all of our uh, triangles that will get rid of our ingon, but it won't be kind of like this huge and uh, triangle uh, cluster. It will be just a very small cluster in a very localized area. So let's go ahead and try to add an edge loop here. Now, I believe we tried this in class, and we figured out that it won't ha work, but we'll try it again just to show you that it won't work. We're going to mesh, uh, edit mesh tool, and we're going to click on the uh, mesh tools, and we're going to try to create a edge loop here. And again, my tool says it's one. And if I click here, it creates an edge loop. It creates it in the wrong direction. It creates it all the way downward where I want to kind of cut across. So I'm going to hit Control z here. Instead, I'm basically going to do this by hand. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my multi-cut tool, turn on my symmetry to object Z, and I'm going to click in the middle of this, and I think if I hold Shift, it'll snap to the middle, and then I'm going to cut over here. Now, again, if you kind of left-click and hold Shift, it will kind of snap to 10 degrees. I'm going to snap it to 90 degrees here, and you can see it creates on both sides. I'm going to hit Enter and finalize that cut. And then I'm going to go over here, and again, I want to make sure that I'm in the center here. And then I'm going to click over here on this point. And then click over here. And this is not working because I think I have uh, um, Object Z on. Let me turn off Object Z real quick. I think now that's better. So again, I want to turn on Snap to Point. I had to redo my, repeat my uh, redo. Oh, didn't like it. Okay, so I'm going to turn on my Object Z and I'm going to turn it off. i got to turn on my Object Z here, and again, I'm going to hold Shift here, and then I'm going to hold Shift, left click, drag to 90%. Hit OK. That will perform that cut. Now i got to turn off Object Z because I think I was cutting across uh, things that are symmetrical. So I'm going to click left click here and then click that there. It creates a cut across there. And now I'm going to create my own custom cut from here to again, make sure you turn on snap to grid here, or snap to point, and then make sure that you're connecting point to point. I'm going to left click there and left click there, and it creates a subdivision that I created by hand. So there is my little uh, edge loop here that's going to help me create all my triangles. So this is going to make it faster and more localized and not such a large bunch of triangles. So this is where it gets kind of tedious. But to help us, let's go ahead and turn on Object Z again. And we're going to start cutting holes from here to here. So we're going to create triangles out of this end gun. So we're going to go here and go here, here to here. Now, while we're doing this, let me explain why we have to do this. Now, basically, I, to create all these little teats, for the tape dispenser, um, we had to create more faces and more geometry. Now, if you want to maintain everything to be quads, it is possible, but that means you need to have quads. That means rectangles or squares, quad, um, quads going across all the way down across your entire model. So basically, this one's, all these lines here will go straight down and across the model, going underneath, going all the way around, where it does not need geometry. So in essence, we're being very inefficient with uh, the use of these faces. We're making flat surfaces, a bunch of quads that don't need to be there. So that is a bad uh, way of modeling. This will you know, still get our detail where we need it, but we will have triangles uh, in a very small area versus having a bunch of quads that stretch along the entire model. And that's uh, bad. 
So uh, let's make sure I count correctly here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight is in the middle. So I'm going to kind of go eight there and then go here and go down there. So now I don't have to like worry about where I'm cutting, make sure I'm snapping to vertex and I can speed this process up a little bit. And I think there's one more there. Yep, there's one more there, maybe one more on the other side. There we go. Okay, so I think that should get rid of all of our N-Gons, or this N-Gon. Uh, and now we gotta do the same thing on the inside. So uh, let's go ahead and kind of rotate my camera here and try to get this so that I can cut all the way across. So again, I'm probably gonna click on the middle one, makes it a little bit easier here. I'm gonna click there and click there. There's one, now I think I can probably do this in x-ray mode if it makes it easier. I don't know if it does. I can't sort of see where I'm making it. So I'm gonna go ahead and left click there and left click there. And now I just need to make a whole bunch of cuts similar to the way I did before. So again, um, maybe if I rotate my camera like this, it's gonna make it a little bit easier, sort of. Uh, I don't know if it makes it that easier. Because I'm going to do my rotate my camera just a little bit each time. So I'm going to left click there, rotate my camera, left click there. Maybe I can kind of left click there, then left click here, then move to the next one, left click this. I have to rotate half as often. Click there, then left click there, left click there, left click there, left click there, hold alt, swing my camera, left click there. I should have not left click there first, then left click there, then left click there, left click there, left click there, left click there, left click. I don't think I clicked correctly. Make sure I click on a vertex, click there. I think I might have made a cut there by accident. I'll see later if I need to fix it. Okay, and then go ahead and click there. Left click there. Left click there. Left click there. Left click there. Okay, so now we've done that side. Now we do the same thing for the other side. Yes, tedious, but uh, I don't know of any other way to speed this up the process. Um, maybe there is a tool out there, or like an add-on, that will let you select all of the vertices that you want to connect to and have it be able to connect to one point. But uh, you guys let me know if there is such a tool. But uh, I don't see one. I mean, can I do it? Let's see, actually try and see if these tools do it. I don't think so. I think I can't hold shift and select multiple points and then uh, have it all cut to the same location. That would be a dream. But um, I guess if you are a good enough coder, you can create these type of tools. Maybe that's a challenge I'll give to my uh, computer science students is to create a tool that allows us to do that and then sell it. Because this would make our life a little bit easier, wouldn't it? And there we have it. I think we've covered every single one. And now we should not have any more ingons. So that is kind of part four of the video. In the next video, I'll cover how to uh, do the bevel and then check our geometry. And then lastly, obviously, apply materials. I'll see you guys in the next video.